Welcome once again to The Sage and thank you for having been our companions on this journey. It's been amazing. We've had the incredible opportunity of discussing with so many, many important people, of learning so much. We hope you also have found it interesting. Today's show is such an important one. It is also going to be a very exciting one. Today, we've decided to discuss something that is so important to us as a people, to us as a country. Education. Why education, you might ask? To me, it seems as if the answer is obvious. It is obvious. And yet, bear with me as I list a few of them. Education is important for a myriad of reasons. It allows the acquisition of knowledge. It allows financial security. It allows equality when you know you can be equal. It allows economic empowerment. It gives you self-confidence. It is a crucial pillar in nation building. I could list a lot more. And yet, in the final analysis, an educated society is crucial for economic growth. We need people to continue to learn and research in order to constantly stay innovative. Countries with higher literacy rates also tend to be better economic situations generally. With a more educated population, there's more employment opportunities that are being opened up. Sadly, funding remains the biggest problem confronting many educational systems, but particularly the systems in Nigeria. The percentage of the budget allocated to education in 2022 was only 7.9%, a far cry from the UNESCO's recommended 26%. Today, therefore, we will be focusing, particularly as we approach the issues of election and new leadership and new direction for this country, we will be focusing on the vital level of early education, the secondary school education in Nigeria. A level critical because it is, in a way, defines quality of tertiary education. Those educational facilities have to have the right material for them to also to succeed. But not just that. It is critical for life training skills. It is critical for eventual engagement in adult life as a useful citizen. Recent experience with the government in terms of commercialization and privatization has sadly led to poorer educational outcomes. I say this and I believe it is true. Privatization is certainly not the answer. Privatization is only likely to widen the gap between the rich and the poor. It will deny many, many children affordable quality education. It will increase the rate of illiteracy and reduce academic performance at the tertiary level. What we need is quality secondary education everywhere in this country. This can only be achieved by collective action. Action by all of us. Action collective, ongoing from every sector in the country. And so, we are indeed privileged to have on set with us today an exciting, exciting example of collective efforts to contribute meaningfully in empowering our secondary education in this country. We have on set with us very distinguished gentlemen from the Alumni Association of one of the most famous secondary schools in Nigeria. 
a school no less than the government secondary school, Afigbo. Stay with us. When we come back, we will introduce this remarkable gentleman to you. Welcome once again to The Sage, and thank you for having been with us. We have an exciting program for you. We've kept you waiting before introducing our distinguished gentleman on the set. But it's going to be a show you will remember for a long time. Let me start, however, even before I talk about what we're going to discuss, to introduce this remarkable man to you. For the rest, on my left is Sa Ifani Eleje. He is the national president of the government secondary school Afikwa Old Boys Association, the Alumni Association, and was indeed re-elected for a second term at the recent 2022 Homecoming and World Convention held in October 2022 in Afibo itself. A businessman, a community leader, and a politician. He is currently the All Progressive Grand Alliance's senatorial candidate for Ebony South Senatorial District of Ebony State. Welcome. Thank you. It is a courageous move. Thank you. And we do wish you the very best of luck. Thank you. Eleje was the first branch president after the Abuja branch, which had gone comatose, was revitalized. The Abuja branch, without a doubt, has become, I am told, the shining lights of the association and of the brotherhood. Well done, sir. Thank you. And welcome to the set. Thank you. <laughs> Next to him is another illustrious gentleman, Mr. Ejofo Ezekwe. Ejofo Ezekwe is the founder and managing director of Chieftain Associates, with over 40 years experience in merchant and commercial banking and business and financial advisory, providing creative solutions to a myriad of business and financial challenges. Mr. Ezekwe has unparalleled expertise and experience in the equipment leasing industry, both in Nigeria and in the United States. He developed the leasing product for Chase Merchant Bank, Nigeria, way back in 1983, and helped found the Equipment Leasing Association of Nigeria, of which he served as its secretary, treasurer, and then president, from 1986 to 1991. He was the general manager of First Interstate Merchant Bank. He served on the board of Cooperative Commerce Bank and was the managing director and chief executive of African Continental Bank. This from 1993 to 1997. He founded Chieftain Associates in 1999. This retired bank CEO and a leading asset and leasing consultant was the keynote speaker at the recent 2022 homecoming event and world convention event in Afibo. Ejio, as he's popularly known, is one of the key pillars of the Abucha branch. Indeed, he was the former branch president and significantly impacted and continues to impact the alma mater, the brotherhood of the association in more ways that can be imagined. Welcome to the set, Mr. Ezekwe. Thank you. And last, but certainly not the least, on my right is a lovely gentleman. I, I think I can take the privilege of calling him young man. <laughs> as he told me to before the, before the show started, because he says I'm younger than all the rest of them, but very dynamic. And as we discussed before the show, a lovely, lovely sense of humor. Thank you. He's Mr. Franklin Ginger Eke, a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations. He's a public affairs consultant. 
He is the current National Publicity Secretary elected at the recent 2022 homecoming events that we had spoken about in our people. And prior to this, he had held the positions of Abuja Branch Secretary and National Publicity Secretary of the Alumni Association. Mr. K, you're so welcome to the Thank side. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for gracing the sage. Uh, the sage refuses to be intimidated by all these gentlemen. And so I have won the trousers today to be a part of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Thank you, Sus. Thank you. Welcome. But seriously, we are pleased that you're here. We are pleased because it's such an important topic. As we had said in the introduction, secondary education is so vital. Um, I don't know which is more, the primary or the secondary, but it's certainly at the secondary level that you really build that young person so that they can be effective at anything else afterwards, whether it's the university or whether it's they are going to technological trainings and other things, or whether it is indeed to be a well-performing adult later in life. So thank you for what you do. And for our viewers, I'm going to say that because we managed to get them relaxed and ready to talk to us, we are going to use this opportunity maximally and discuss three major elements with them. First of all, we're going to have them tell us about Afikbo government school. What is this school? And then we will move on to this amazing convention and homecoming, which they had recently. And finally, they will tell us their efforts or their plans to indeed ensure that Afikbo becomes a model for support to a secondary institution. Don't miss any bit of it. It's going to be a long discussion, but full of information, what sharing and what learning from. And so let's begin with the first topic. And I turn and I say, Federal Government College, Afibo. Or was, is it federal or it used to be? No. Government Secondary School, School Afibo. Afibo. <clears throat> Tell us about it. Well, it's, um, thank you. Thank you for having me. A government secondary school, Afibo, is um, a leadership institution that was created by the British administration to develop leaders for the colony of Nigeria. It was created um, developed after the likes of Eton okay. and Haro. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, they started here with King's College Lagos. And um, subsequently, in the East, they developed the government uh, secondary school, Umwahe, then developed to Awere, and Afibo came along. Subsequently, Port Harcourt came on board. Omoya, Afikbo, Oweri. Omoya, Oweri, Afikbo, and then Port Harcourt. Now, this, um, these were elite schools, so to speak, because they attracted the best students. The entrance exam was very competitive. Okay. And um, that was it. Afikbo particularly was focused on STEM. That's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Mm -hmm. And so you find the products of the school all over the world in medicine, engineering, IT, and uh, similar areas. And they are doing very well. And that's it about government secondary school. Afikbo. Um, about 10 years or more than a little over 10 years ago, following the uh, aftermath of the Civil War, mm -hmm. the old boys of the school began to notice the... Sorry, let me, let me, let me stop you there yeah. and say, what are the examples of your illustrious products? 
Oh. I, I ask because I personally know that there are some pretty famous ones there. Okay, let's let me quickly use them, boast about them. Let me quickly start with the with the with the governor of the state. Including our husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because that is an old Okay. <laughs> Now, the, the present governor of uh, the state, uh, Umahi Engin engineer himself, Dave huh? Omahe, is yeah, an old yeah. boy of the school. Um, um, the former minister, um, the, a professor, ABC Mosu. ABC was went to Africa yeah. too. Okay. Professor Nebo. Okay. Former minister of power. Uh, okay. Former minister of power. There's uh, the former deputy governor, engineer <laughs> Okoisu. You know, there they, they are, they are, they are many of them. Many of them. Many of we them. are just talking of the people here when we go to the diaspora. A prime example of what I said at yeah. the beginning, when I said that a good secondary school builds them, you know, yes, for the future into becoming the best they can be. Great. So that's, um, that's it. We have um, a bunch of old boys who felt that having benefited so much from public school education. Mm -hmm. They felt aggrieved that after the war, there was a downturn in the fortunes of public schools. And so they came together mm -hmm. and have been uh, intervening massively in um, the affairs of the school. Let me take you back a little while. Mm -hmm. At the end of the Civil War, the Nigerian military camped in government secondary school, Afibo. Really? Yes, for a period of about two, two years. Yes. The school, when it reopened, was reopened at the Institute of Administration in Enugu because the students couldn't go back because the school was literally occupied. They were still there? Yes, the okay. military were there. And it took a lot of uh, uh, negotiations with uh, the government to get them to vacate. I think it was under uh, one of our principals, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember the name. He got them anyway to leave, and the students had to go back to the school. Okay. By then, the infrastructure had completely decayed. Roofs were off, windows were out, toilets were broken. You know, it wasn't habitable. Well, they tried to manage it as it was, but it got more and more difficult over time. So the old boys began to make investments in infrastructure in the school. And then they've taken it from that dilapidated state back to a position where it's one of the best schools in terms of infrastructure at present in a Boeing state. That is, that is an amazing, amazing achievement. Um, Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. you know, because that shows a great deal of generosity and dedication. Well done. Mm. Thank you. So that's where we are. Maybe one of my colleagues may have something to add to it. I know that the first principal was an Australian, um, Charles Lowe by name. Okay. And I'm informed that his country home in Australia is called Afibo Mansion. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's interesting. He's late now, but it is still there. Afibo Mansion. Yes. I think what you need to do is one, one of these days get the family to send you a picture of the, house, <laughs> of the yeah. place. Yeah. Of the place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's um, in those days when I went to the school, like we had. The when, were you, when were you in Afibo? I joined Afibo in 1967. I took that competitive entrance exam and I was lucky to get in. And, and I got, Mr. Joffa, when were you there? The, the, the same, same year. 67 set. Yeah. 
Okay. See, we, we, we used to have brains. <laughs> <laughs> so I shouldn't ask Mr. Ke when he was there. <laughs> well, you can ask me. I joined in 1977. Okay, 10 mm. years later. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, um, that was it. It was a great school. The results, the school set results were amazing. And um, the, the children of who, who is who in Eastern Nigeria? struggled to be there. The Okbaras, the Imokes, the all their children were there. And it was very this is very instructive. We had students Emeko Juko's son was there. We had students from Cameroon, from um, Tanzania, from uh, okay. Sudan. From so you Sudan. Had international from oh, yeah. Sudan. Oh, yeah. the, the late uh, uh, Prime Minister of Southern Sudan that died in a, in a plane crash. Uh, what John Garan was an old boy of the school. John Garan was an old boy of the school. Let me make your your the other two gentlemen and say, what about you? What was your experience of the school? I mean, you all went through there. I heard through an inside source. Now, one of you on this set was I uh, actually had a nickname called and was called the ghosts um, <laughs> while he was there in Afibo. Yeah. Perhaps because a school is not just about the academics. It's also mm -hmm. about what are the other things, the socialization, the yeah, extracurricular. Extra Perhaps you want to want to share some of your personal experience while you were in the school. It, it was a great school, very tight, very disciplined. And it was all for a purpose. That is why it was set up. It was set up to lay the foundation, um, you know, to to provide manpower to the burgeoning administration that Nigeria was developing. Okay, realizing that secondary school really is where those foundations are laid. So it wasn't just academics, even though academics was very high, but it was in, it was in self-leadership and everything else. So your life was regimented, but it was for a purpose. It was to instill that discipline that the young kid needs to succeed in life. So we went through it and you had to participate in, in everything. Okay, you must make your A1s in, in academics, but you also must play games and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, all the other social things that, um, that uh, budding school. And it was all budding. You had to be on campus. They didn't want kids coming in from, from outside um, for that molding process. Now, the question of ghosts. <laughs> was it you? It was me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a new school year, you know, and just coming out from a long holiday. And, you know, new school years, you you are equipped with new uniforms and so on. Our uniforms in, at that time was white, so I was resplendent in, uh, you know, white shorts and white shirt. Beautifully stashed and White iron. shorts. <laughs> and then with my yellow skin. And then a classmate of mine, very stupid man, <laughs> looks at me and calls me ghost. And I, I've always known that nicknames stick when you fight over it. So I tried to ignore him. I ignored him. He still stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and so you forever became known as ghost. 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 Yeah. But anybody that calls me ghost was from that set in Africa. The person knows me deep. Okay. That's, that's, that's the, the younger good thing ones about don't dare. They, don't, say, they don't even know that I'm. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was that's very interesting. Name. That's very interesting. Uh, Ginger, do you have any anecdotes you want to share briefly? Um, just to say that. Like uh, my two seniors, we call them seniors and we address them as pleases. You must, that's part of the discipline. You must recognize somebody as your senior. And so they come across as role models. Okay. Okay. Because it was uh, part of the tradition of the colonial empire. 
you needed to accord in that respect. So our seniors, we call them, we address them as pleasers. Yeah, we call him AG of four. I call him AG of four, please. LJ, please. Okay. In fact, okay. On the fact that I think we need to adopt that across the country. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we do that as part of the discipline. Yeah. Not one. Unlike what of things now. Yeah. You know, people don't like have discipline and respect. But the important thing is uh, from what they've said is it was a school built on discipline. Discipline. Order. Because as you imagine, every young growing child at the age of eight, ten, needed to be molded to into the character that you will lead you into the future. Okay. So that was what government secondary school I think, was all about. Mm -hmm. So you come in fresh from your house, you are put in with other young people, and you begin to learn proper ways of life. So if you go through that secondary process, by the time you are getting to post-secondary school, you already have a focus on what life is all about. And this, is, this has helped to bring us to where we are present. Thank you so much, all of you. I mean, um, the two strong takeaways, it's, it was a school built on excellence, um, a school that very, very taught learning at the highest quality, yeah. knowledge sharing, but also discipline, yeah. knowing that the two in a young person needed to go together. Um, so this is the beginning of our discussion. Um, thank you so much for having shared that. Um, we will take a break and continue next week because there's still so much to talk about. And next week we will go into this amazing homecoming and convention that you've had recently. Um, even as we also now discuss the wonderful concrete things you're doing to further your school. So do stay with us. We will be back next week. And next week we will go on to talk about the convention they just had. We thank you. Thank you.